Welcome, welcome. A little while ago now, we did a video reviewing this bad boy, the Hyperkin Retron 2. And in it, we mentioned that we wouldn't mind picking up the Hyperkin Retron Square, which plays Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games, rather than NES and SNES games like this one. And the temptation was too much. Here it is, the Hyperkin Retron Square in all of its glory. As usual, we'll be unboxing this with you today and then going back to actually play with it a little bit before giving you our final thoughts in the review later in the video. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy these hardware unboxings and reviews. And let's do it. We've had this thing for a couple of days now and I'm absolutely itching to get it open. Ladies first. <gasps> you guys can peek first. Oh, oh, wow, it's really small. Look at this. <gasps> Wait, really? Oh, oh yeah. my God, how cute. Look, look at the comparison there. It's way smaller. Get that out, get it out of there. Wow, 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 I did not know. Wow, wow, either. <laughs> I did not know it was so small. I didn't realize it was so cute and tiny. <laughs> yeah, that's nice, isn't it? What? Well, why did I think it was like the size of this whole box? Yeah, but I guess that that's... doesn't really make sense. No, I assume that also. Wipes in the box. Oh, so what we got? Power, reset, classic. One controller port. I thought about this for a while. I was like, I hope it comes with two controllers. Of course it doesn't. You can't, you can't play the game with two controllers. It's a single player console. Isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so of course it doesn't have two controllers. Oh my god, you're so right. I had all of these grand plans of playing Street Fighter with you. Yep. No, can't do that. Dum dum. Do we? All right. Well, unless you have a link cable, is that a thing on these? Probably not. Uh, memory. Oh, it's got memory card. Okay, that's interesting. Is there one already in it? Yeah, I don't. Mm, I'll pull it out later. I don't know. Ooh. Look, I don't want to break anything, <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it for the moment. Well, I've got a box of cords here. And then the 4x3, 16x9 chains. I like that. Cool. All right, yeah, let's see. What have we got? Okay, the cheese is... My God! <laughs> oh, my God! Those are my special sharp scissors, too. At least I don't have a huge knife like last time. <laughs> USB-C. That's nice. What does that do? Uh, it goes in there. But keep it charged. Oh yeah, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> power supply. Does it actually come with a power bank though? Yeah, here it is. Oh yeah. Butcher. Beautiful. So compact. Not Australian oh, yeah. plugs as well, like usual. Yes, but... so if you're anywhere else other than America, you are going to need to buy a converter, but that's okay because we have one of those, luckily. I'm used to that. Sorry, I'm on... You unbox yeah, one. Yeah, give me a box. <laughs> I'm unwrapping all the boxes. What um, else is in there? Oh, yeah, there's a... Um, um, uh, I thank you for your purchase and support. Always appreciated. Love getting those nice little cards. Thank you. Uh, Retron Square. We've been saying square, but it could easily be just SQ. Is it SQ? Mm. Or is it sk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even square. It's sk. <laughs> Welcome and to the Retron sticker. Sk I think. Ooh. Yeah, we'll put that on there. Why not? All right. Yeah, here we go. This must be the controller, hey? I hope so. This is why I haven't opened one yet. I'm gonna put elevator music over this part. Hold music, since we were all on hold waiting Whoa, for Oh, sorry! I'm just not very good. I didn't realize I thought... Leave me alone. More chords? You're doing great. You're yeah, doing great. <laughs> HDMI? Mm, yes, HDMI. Pretty standard. I like the little caps. It looks like Ooh, a long here one. here we go. This is the goods, isn't it? Yeah, that's the goods. If the goods. The controller. Again, just a single controller, a single player console, but that is okay. It looks really nice, black and gold. It does. Now, I'm pretty sure the Game Boy only has A and B buttons, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Why is that? It looks exactly the same as that yeah, controller. Yeah, the Retron 2 controller. I think they've just... It is weightier though. Oh. 
So instead of getting rid of buttons, I guess they've just gone with the same design. Makes sense. It does make yeah, sense. Yeah, why not? It and looks you, really nice. You don't have to get a new like mold created. Yeah, exactly. I really, go away that one. I really like the gold in the buttons. I really like the transparent um, black. Yeah, the whole thing is just really nice looking, isn't it? Yeah. Really snazz. Feels great. The buttons feel actually a lot better than they did on the Retron 2, so that's nice. Ooh. I appreciate that. Yeah, it is nice. Just, it's pretty much the same size, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know why I didn't realize this was so small. Oh, yeah, no, neither did I. Oh my mm. God, little kitty. All, All right. right. Give us one more second. All right, all right, I'm back with some actual games. Put something in there. Yeah, exactly, let's put something in. Oh God, this is always, I guess it goes towards you guys. Yeah, nice. Look at that, looks cute, doesn't it? I think it's actually adorable. Yeah, I really like it. All right, all right, done. Street Fighter fits. Now again, I assume it's towards yeah. You guys. Oh. What an adorable little cutie. <laughs> I am really, really excited to get into playing this console. I think this is a fantastic idea if you can't find a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance anymore. And you get to play it on your TV. I'm going to finish my run through of the Midas cap on the TV and I am so keen to do that. I might have to replay it just to... Play it on the TV. Yeah. I think you might. But that's it for our unboxing at least. Make sure you stick around to find out our full review and our final thoughts will be at the end of the video. Boop. And we're back. As you might be able to tell, a little bit of time has gone past. This plant's gotten bigger. This plant's new. His name's Jerome. Do you like him? But most importantly, we've actually had a chance to play with our new toy. Now, the journey hasn't been the smoothest of experiences. We did encounter a couple of disappointments along the way, but we also had some wins, so it's not all just doom and gloom. Our journey began by firing up our copy of Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy. Unfortunately, my collection of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games is back in New Zealand, and Tom didn't start his collection of Nintendo games until the Game Boy Advance. So we only had this one game to test out, but it did work really well. One of the coolest features of the Retron Square is the ability to change the aspect ratio with a flick of a switch. Now we did complain in our previous Hyperkin video that this was a much needed feature, so we're pretty damn stoked that it's included here. While playing in the original 4x3 does lead the screen with black bars of nothingness on either side, we found that far preferable to widescreen. Yeah, it was nice to have the option of widescreen, but obviously it has to stretch out the picture in order to do that. And there was just something about the chubby character models and the stretched out text that just wasn't quite right. I don't really like the widescreen. It's honestly a little bit of a shame that we only had this single Street Fighter cartridge to test, because as we discovered later on, the user experience seems to vary greatly depending on what game you stick in this thing. But we can only go off our own personal experiences and being able to play this portable Street Fighter title on the big screen was pretty cool. Boringly cool, actually. <laughs> Apart from the initial excitement, there really wasn't anything else to report other than it was awesome. The Square does what it says it does when it comes to Game Boy games and it worked perfectly for us. However, we can't say the same for Game Boy Advance games. <sighs> this was a little bit disappointing. So we primarily got this thing to play GBA titles, especially The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. And this is where everything just fell apart. Don't know if it was just our copy of the game, but for one reason or another, the Retron Square just did not like it. So at first the Minish Cap just didn't register at all. It was like there wasn't even a game inserted into the system. And then when we were finally able to actually get it going through a combination of just turning it off and on again and waiting, all of the save data was corrupted and it wouldn't let us start a new save file either. Our dreams of visiting the world of the Minish on the big screen 
have been crushed. Now, it is entirely possible that we're just missing something or just doing the whole thing completely wrong. But we did clean the cartridge and we know that it still works on the Game Boy Advance because we instantly plugged it back into one. And there was all our old save data just chilling there like nothing had happened, completely uncorrupted. We actually kind of hope that we're just doing something wrong because we'd still really like to play it on the square. So if anybody has any advice or answers, please, for the love of Zelda, leave them in the comments below. But we went back and forth with this thing for ages and we just couldn't get it to work. So to quote my younger self from a couple of weeks ago, I'm gonna finish my run through of the Midas cap on the TV and I am so keen. Sadly though, even if this cartridge did work, that would have been impossible. The way the square works is that it basically downloads a ROM from the cartridge and then uses its own storage to emulate it. It doesn't emulate Game Boy or Game Boy Advance hardware, just the software. So as save data is stored on the GBA cartridge itself, these files are not copied across and you basically have to start again. That's all understandable, but it won't let us make a new save file either. There are actually some forums online with other people having the same issue with the Minish Cap, so we're not really sure what's going on there, but at least we're not alone. Also, this issue with the save data means that if you were planning on picking up Super Mario World where you left off 20 years ago, you're not going to be able to do that on the square. Thankfully though, in one case, this whole save data situation turned out to be extremely convenient for us and allowed us to play a game that we were previously unable to play. So we have this copy of Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town, but the batteries inside of the cartridge are dead. So you can't actually save the game, which means that the only way to play it is in one sitting or making sure that your Game Boy doesn't go flat before you're done. This might be doable in some cases, but Harvest Moon games are known for gobbling up to 100 hours of your life. So it's just not viable to do it that way. Since the Retron Square has its own independent saves though, we're finally able to play it. So you win some and you lose some. Yeah, when I got my new Game Boy Advance SP, I got two games to play on it. One was this bootleg version of the Minish Cap, which didn't even come, ripping me off $80. And the other one was this copy of Harvest Moon, which I played for like five hours before discovering next time I booted it up that it wasn't even saving. So I'm pretty stoked to finally be able to play it. You poor thing. <laughs> this whole software emulation thing is also the reason why the system takes so damn long to load GBA games. Essentially, a Hyperkin has to copy the whole game over to its own systems every time you want to play it, which is a relatively long process. This issue does seem to be limited to the advance though, as the Game Boy game booted up relatively instantly. We did try out a couple of Game Boy Advance games, and apart from the obvious culprit, <laughs> the other ones did work pretty well. There was a moment when we first loaded up Yu-Gi-Oh where the whole screen was strobing, which really hurt our brains and definitely required a flash warning, but once we reset it, it was fine. We mentioned before that switching to widescreen with the Game Boy games was a little weird since everything was just so stretched out. But the GBA screen, being that little bit more rectangular, meant that the switch to widescreen was far less noticeable and it actually looked pretty good. In some games, such as Yu-Gi-Oh, this was actually our preferred way to play. Playing all 144p is fine when it's on a tiny Game Boy screen, but that just wouldn't pass when you're playing on a 65 inch 4K TV. So the Retron does upscale everything to 720p. This seemed to work really well and everything looked crystal clear on the big screen. We're both huge fans of the Game Boy Advance era of pixel art, so we're pretty happy that the emulation did it justice. When the Hyperkin SQ launched, there was a whole load of problems with the Game Boy Advance side of things, and consequently, a whole load of bad reviews. It actually dropped frames, and as a result, looked and felt super clunky. Also, the whole thing was crammed into the 4x3 aspect ratio of the original Game Boy, so basically, the GBA emulation sucked. Thankfully though, there's been a whole lot of updates since then and our console came loaded with them already, so none of that's an issue anymore. So if you were put off by some of the earlier reviews, it might be worth reconsidering. 
Unless, of course, you want to play the minus cap. Who knows how long we're going to be waiting for that issue to be resolved. If it ever is. This thing was definitely built with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color in mind. And, as a result, seems to run flawlessly for those games. The Game Boy Advance was seemingly an afterthought. And unfortunately, it still kind of seems that way even now, over a year later. However, most issues seem to be easily fixed by turning it off and on again. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Have you tried turning it off and on again? And for the most part, advanced games run fine. So is the Hyperkin Square worth buying? I guess that's why you watch a review, right? To see if it's worth buying. Mm, yeah. And even if you still have your Game Boys, then there is still value in the Retron Square. It offers you something that the handheld consoles don't. A way to play these games on your TV, which is awesome. Some might see this as a cheap gimmick, but for us, it was worth the $85 it cost to pick this thing up. Thank God we both have Switches, because our TV is going to be in use for a little while now. If you found any of this information helpful, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can also find us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash somekindofgaming or Twitter under the same name. But the links to all of that stuff will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. I don't like it. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, my neck.